Apollo 12's mechanical problems have been solved, and the moon launch is go for tomorrow on schedule. President Nixon makes an extraordinary visit to the Congress and thanks members of both parties who support him on the war. Demonstrators who oppose Mr. Nixon on the war begin with... Death in Washington. And Vice President Agnew makes a speech about the men responsible for network television news. Howard? Reports tonight from Tom Jarrell on the President's surprise visit to the Capitol, Bob Clark on the Presidential Address to the Senate, Sam Donaldson on the anti-war protests now underway, Frank Mariano on a Marine division whose fighting days in Vietnam are over, Gregory Jackson on five arrests in connection with those New York bombings, and Howard Tuckner on a morale booster for police in Indianapolis. Frank? Today, Apollo 12 astronaut Alan Bean said, we're ready to go when they are. And they, the men behind man's second flight to the moon, are ready too. Yesterday, a hitch developed that could have delayed the moon shot for a month. A leaky hydrogen tank was discovered. Working around the clock, technicians replaced it. The space agency says the launch will go up on schedule at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. Here with a report on the men and the mission is ABC science editor, Jules Bergman. Apollo 12 begins here at Pad 39 as the epic journey of Apollo 11 did. And if there's one thing that's clear, it's this. Apollo 11 is a tough act to follow. But no astronauts were ever better picked for a mission than Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean. All Navy commanders and all old friends. And their 10-day flight is a brutal test of human endurance, including seven hours or more of exploring the moon on foot. Spacecraft Commander Conrad, 39, veteran of Gemini 5 and 11, is funny, friendly, outspoken, and hard as nails when he has to be. So are Gordon and Bean. Unlike Apollo 11, where it was enough just to land on the moon, Conrad and Bean have to make a pinpoint landing, trying to eliminate the four-mile era Armstrong and Aldrin experienced. If man is to really explore, he has to be able to land exactly where he wants to. Conrad, who's had more practice at landings than any other man, is aiming to set down Intrepid, his lunar module, as close as he can to the Surveyor 3 spacecraft that landed two and a half years ago. He and Al Bean then plan to moonwalk over to Surveyor during their second EVA and remove and bring back its TV camera and other parts. They first plan to land 1,100 feet away, now hope to touch down almost on the rim of its crater. They have to land within 3,000 feet or they won't have enough oxygen to safely get to Surveyor and make it back to Intrepid. The major goal of the mission is to deploy five scientific experiments that will radio back data on moon quakes, solar winds, and the moon's atmosphere for more than a year. Conrad and Bean will also gather rock and soil samples and painstakingly photograph each step, each sample to tell us more to see if this part of the moon differs from the Sea of Tranquility where the eagle landed. They'll spend 32 hours on the moon, and after they take off to rejoin Dick Gordon and the Clipper, the empty Intrepid will then be sent smashing into the moon so as not to leave debris that might endanger future flights. Then, one more day in lunar orbit, filming future landing sites before heading home for a landing in the South Pacific. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News at Cape Kennedy. ABC will carry the launch of Apollo 12 live beginning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. We'll be back with more news in a moment. Look for this label. The leaky tank in the Apollo 12 rocket was replaced last night, and the schedule now calls for a launch on time at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow morning. And it will, of course, be seen live on NBC television. The three astronauts, Conrad, Cooper, and Dean, uh, Bean, said they were ready to go. If all goes as scheduled, they'll be on the moon in the middle of next week, sending back television pictures in living color. Just hours before three more Americans are to be sent hurtling to the moon from this Cape Kennedy launch site, the agency responsible has received the sharpest rebuke yet from scientists who continue to complain that their interests are being mostly ignored. A presidential panel charged today that, in effect, NASA doesn't know enough to determine what role man could or should play in space exploration and won't make the effort to find out. 
The panel, headed by Dr. Lewis Branscombe, director of the Bureau of Standards, says scientists have been trying for nine years to persuade NASA to learn more about man's ability to survive and function in space, largely to no avail. So, the panel concludes, it doesn't make sense to talk about two-year flights, such as a trip to Mars. This is the latest evidence of a long smoldering dispute between scientists and engineers. In recent months, five top scientists have resigned from NASA, and four of the scientists being trained as astronauts are no longer with that program. They've had a common complaint, too much emphasis on engineering, or how to do things, and not enough on science, or what should be done, and why. Publicly, NASA says it's carrying out all the scientific experimenting it can, reasonably and safely, Privately, the agency doesn't seem perturbed. One top NASA official discussing the exodus of scientists says he's not displeased to see some of them leave and strongly indicated that a few had been encouraged to resign. Well, rainstorms have been sweeping the Cape throughout the day and more showers are forecast for tomorrow morning, but the weathermen don't expect anything serious enough to delay the launch. Frank McGee, NBC News, Cape Kennedy piece of news that may not be important, but it's a reflection of the times we live in. For the second time in his history, man sets forth for the moon tomorrow. Walter Cronkite reports on the latest developments from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Tonight, the launch crew appears to be winning its fight to send Apollo 12 on its way to the moon tomorrow morning. A small fuel tank, which caused trouble yesterday, was replaced today and ahead of schedule. The weather forecast for tomorrow is cloudy with possible showers, but space officials say that will be all right. It's been raining most of the day, is raining right now. Our color coverage of the launch begins with the CBS Morning News at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. President Nixon is coming down to watch this launch, and today he announced that he is promoting uh, the 43-year-old former manager of the Apollo program, George Lowe, to be deputy administrator of the Civilian Space Agency. That agency, NASA, was criticized sharply today by a White House panel of scientists. Their report accused NASA of ignoring for almost a decade expert advice on ways to determine whether long-range manned space flight is feasible. As a result, the report said, neither NASA nor anyone else knows enough about man's ability to survive in space to talk now about months-long flights to distant places like Mars. Getting back to the immediate future of space travel, Pete Conrad, the Apollo 12 commander, recently gave David Shoemaker this answer as to how it would feel to be a historical footnote as the third man on the moon. Well, I think that's really great myself. Uh, uh, like anybody in the office, I would have uh, loved to have been the first man on the moon. But I'm not sure that after I was the first man on the moon, I would want to uh, have to suffer all the things that Neil's going to have to suffer and Buzz and Mike uh, uh, for the rest of their lives. And, uh, and uh, our, our business really is the flying in, and I don't think any of us are here for the fame and glory. And, and so uh, I'm quite happy to have the second flight. And like every flight in the program, the next flight uh, really is doing something more and different, so there is no such thing as a bad flight anywhere in the program as far as we're concerned. That's the way it is, Thursday, November 13th, 1969, T-minus-one. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center.